Oh, boogie right. man Ben coming round the band is boogie man Ben. Is boogie man Ben. Thanks to fellow fright fiends and thanks so much for dropping by the Horror Zone channel. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, I want to thank everyone's patience uh, for this uh, long-awaited review of The Black Phone. Now, this film debuted on the 24th of June, which is nearly a month ago. Um, I actually didn't see it opening weekend because that was the weekend I was uh, on a business trip. I was down in Central California, and my wife didn't want to go see the movie right before I left for a five-day business trip. So we didn't see it until I got back. I got back on the 29th, and we went and saw it on Thursday, June 30th, at the very end of the month. Um, I had planned to do uh, my review, um, you know, have it posted 4th of July weekend, but I was so wrapped up in working on my uh, my video for Salem's Lot, My Life in the Lot, I just kept back burnering this, this review. But I'm really anxious to talk about this uh, movie and I hope everyone enjoys my review of it. So first I'm gonna give a little synopsis about what the plot deals with. After being abducted by a child killer and locked in a soundproof basement, a 13 year old boy starts receiving calls on a disconnected phone from the killer's previous victims. The movie stars uh, Mason Thames as Finney, uh, Madeline McGraw as Gwen, Ethan Hawke as The Grabber, Jeremy Davies as Terrence, E. Roger Mitchell as Detective Wright, Troy Rudseal as Detective Miller, and Miguel Cazares Mora as Rob. The movie was based on a short story by uh, Joe Hill called The Black Phone, of course. Uh, the screenplay was done by C. Robert Cargill, and the movie was directed by Scott Derrickson. Little trivia on the film, uh, The Grabber, played by Ethan Hawke, dons several creepy masks throughout the film, each exposing different portions of his face. The mask was designed by legendary prosthetic makeup artist Tom Savini. Uh, the first time Mason Thames, who plays Finney, saw the iconic mask, he said it was terrifying, coupled with Ethan Hawke's bone-chilling performance as the grabber. It is explained that the movie was delayed for its initial release. It was originally supposed to come out in February, February 4th, if I'm not mistaken, um, to June of 2022, due to unexpectedly great preview showings. Once Blumhouse realized just how great early reactions were, they gave it a summer release date. Scott Derrickson made this his next project after leaving Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness over creative differences. He did remain an executive producer on that film, though. Now, I'm a huge fan of Scott Derrickson as a filmmaker. Uh, he's made what I think is arguably one of the scariest movies in recent memory, and that is 2012's Sinister. Um, this film I didn't see in the movie theaters when it came out uh, 10 years ago, which is crazy. Um, but this movie still terrifies me to this day. When I saw that Scott Derrickson, C. Robert Cargill, um, Ethan Hawke, and James Ransom were all going to be back in this new movie, The Black Phone, based on uh, Joe Hill's uh, short story. I knew I was going to be in for something special, and I sure was. Um, I think The Black Phone is brilliant. Um, I absolutely loved it. Um, very, very well done. The cinematography was fantastic in this film right off the gate. I just want to talk about that. It really did feel like 1978, which is when uh, the story takes place. So hands down, all of the performance in this, not only is Ethan Hogg fantastic in the role as the grabber, um, he's absolutely terrifying and I love the many facets to his character that are kind of that are depicted visually by the many different looks to the mask that he wears. For the most part, you don't see Ethan Hawke's face through the entire film. There's a couple of shots in it, but for the most part, every time you see him, he has that mask on or different variations of that mask, and I thought that was really brilliant. Also, the children in this, the, the child actors are, are absolutely fantastic. Mason Thames and Madeline McGraw as Finney and Gwen, brother and sister, they're absolutely amazing. They're both, you know, uh, going through horrible situations, not only are there kidnappings in their area, um, but they're also bullied, especially Mason. And also the, uh, they have a very abusive alcoholic father uh, in the character of Terrence played by Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Davies. You know, the movie takes place in 1978. Um, I was four years old in 1978. So I grew up in the, you know, as a child, I was a kid around this time. I was a young kid in the early eighties and I got bullied constantly. There's nothing more humiliating or degrading than being bullied because there's no real reason for it. And I was never, you know, I was a shy kid. And so I really related to what the character of Finney was going through. Also, this really deals with some rough subject matter in dealing with uh, child abductions. Uh, when I grew up, you had Adam Walsh who had been kidnapped and murdered. Um, you had Kevin Collins who had been kidnapped. So I grew up when that was starting to happen a lot more frequently. And my mom was very uh, concerned about me um, as a kid. And I was, you know, always instructed to go straight home after school. I didn't talk to strangers. Um, I, you know, went home, I stayed in the house and I couldn't go outside until my mom got home because my mom worked full time. So 
that was something else I really related to was the whole fear of abductions, of child abductions. And that is the main focus of this film is who is the grabber and he's taking these kids and eventually he does get the character of Finney. Now I know a lot of people have said that this isn't really a horror movie, that's more of a thriller. I don't think it's very scary. Um, for someone who grew up in the time that I did and kidnappings were becoming a, you know, a, something that you would hear about more and more. Maybe that's why I related to the subject matter so much more than maybe others did that grew up in a different time that are younger. And I don't want to give too much away. I know the movie's been out for a month and it's available on streaming now, but uh, I really think people should go into this with an open mind. It's not sinister. It's not dealing with something supernatural, but it is dealing with predators and it is dealing with... Um, a very grim subject matter. It is dealing with people hurting children, and that's always a tough subject to tackle, but I think that everybody that was involved in this did a brilliant job. Everything was authentic. It's something that I think is sorely missing in a lot of uh, movies that are coming out now. Everything seems kind of fake, and this was a movie that just seemed genuine to me, um, and I loved everybody involved in it. Yeah, I couldn't be happier with this film. I think everything was handled beautifully. I loved the way it ended. Um, yeah, it's a fantastic film and easily um, next to X, my favorite film of 2022. So if I had to give The Black Phone a rating on my scale, definitely getting Five Skulls. So that was my review of The Black Phone. I'm curious what others think about it. Uh, please leave me your thoughts down in the comments section below. Try to keep spoilers to a minimum. The movie still is playing in theaters and doing exceptionally well. It's already made uh, almost $70 million here in the States and over $114 million worldwide. So I'm, I'm grateful for the success. It was probably smart that Blumhouse waited to release it. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Also, uh, remember to support the sponsor of this video. This is Kevin over at House of Mysterious Secrets. Um, that's houseofmysterioussecrets.com. I've been buying uh, horror collectibles from Kevin since 2010. Uh, awesome collection of horror uh, items like shirts, hats, uh, toys, uh, posters, soundtracks. Um, if you check out the site, uh, use code 9350 for a one-time 10% off. Tell them the boogeyman sent you. And also, if you guys weren't aware, I do have a Patreon. If you guys want to donate to the channel, um, feel free to do so, but don't feel obligated to do so. Link down below. Thanks so much again for stopping by, and I promise I'll talk to you again real soon. Take it easy. Stay scared as always. Hey fellow Fright Fiends, just want to say thank you again for supporting Boogeyman Ben's Horror Zone. If you're brand new to the channel and you haven't yet subscribed, please hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the bell notification so you're updated every time I drop a new video. I typically do this once or twice a week with new content. Uh, I've been doing this for over 11 years and the horror genre is a passion of mine. And it really means a lot to me that I can share that passion with all of you guys. Thanks so much again for the support and I'll talk to you again later. Take it easy. Stay scared as always.